एस्टीम पैनल मेंबर्स माय डियर मेंबर्स इनवाइटेड गेस्ट एंड स्टूडेंट्स हु आर अटेंडिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर वेबिनार एज अ पार्ट ऑफ लर्निंग प्रोसेस हैप्पी गणेश चतुर्थी टू ऑल ऑफ यू दिस सीजन इज स्टार्टेड मीटिंग्स फ्रॉम एनी टू ऑल दे आर अटेंडिंग द मीटिंग टुडेस टॉपिक इज वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग it is agri products and agri products has taken dominance in the recent time especially the covid period now due importance is given to the agri products and uh, there is a great scope for expansion in the agricultural sector india is pre dominated economy with 65% population deriving their income from agri and agri related products there are lot of talent required to understand the product and convert into the meaningful opportunity with the development of new products new platforms and new technology we are all set to understand the benefit of trading in the derivative market as of now government has procurement of many agri products uh, and distribute in order to see that the interest of farmer is protected this involves huge amount of capex as well as administrative cost and logistic cost derivative market could be a viable to overcome the optimum utilization of resources the objective could easily be achieved by buying and selling of appropriate puts and calls this will leave lot of money in the hands of government for the development of agri markets and support to the farmers all that required is to see that there is proper development of agri commodity market to provide enough flexibility to time for maturity of the market with reasonable volume already pilot project was undertaken by government of india on this particular issue that was really successful so i think you know there is requirement for us again you have to request government to consider of the requirement by planning uh, options as an alternative to the physical buying of the commodities maturity of the market will itself solve many problems which now otherwise has to be achieved through putting restrictions and imposing ban on trading of products currently seven commodities have been banned for a year from december 21 this deprives many stakeholders from the opportunity to protect and protect the protect their interest there are many students who are attending this webinar and we have to tell me we welcome all the students let me tell you there are enough opportunities and career prospect in the financial product related to agri commodities also we have certification program available at ncdex institute of commerce and research mm -hmm. as well as nism i would recommend student to enroll for the certification program and improve their knowledge on the agri commodity this will open up new door for career opportunity post covid era agriculture has taken center stage and it is getting all the priority not only in india but world over it is right time to get the opportunity and build a platform thank you very much thank you uh i can hear now yes uh, this is baskar ji are you fine baskar ji are you connected now can we mm, yes i am finally connected i don't know for some reason i could not hear anybody so is my voice is carrying to you now your voice is carrying earlier i could not hear anyone so no worries all, all the proceedings earlier my apologies absolutely nothing nothing sir i will brief you you please go ahead as a moderator engaging mr navi
moderator, Mr. Baskar, who is going to take over the session. Thank you very much, sir. Please take over. Yes. Thank you. First of all, my apologies. I was, I had logged in much earlier. And while you could hear me, I could not hear you. I tried rebooting the system. I could not understand what was wrong. So finally, I went to my iPad and I've connected to my iPad and I'm speaking to you from my iPad now. One of the problems with technology, I do not know what happened. My apologies. Okay. Uh, for me, as, a, as an outsider who doesn't play the commodity markets, who's not involved in the commodity markets, as a participant, I find the commodity markets very fascinating for three reasons. One, the commodity markets are the way, you, is, are, are the right ways uh, to empower farmers to give them an indication of what the prices are going to be in the future. When you stop a commodity market, you actually disempower farmers. The second reason is that it is another way of wealth generation and getting the entire investment public, investing public also to participate in this process of wealth generation. And the third reason, of course, is that for me, the commodity markets are an early indicator of what, of what could be going right or wrong with the economy. So when I talk to you as a moderator, please understand I'm not a participant. I'm going to be looking at the market from a different point of view. And while you have a participant's point of view, I have an observer's point of view. And I'm going to ask you questions because I'm trying to understand how this game is played. Uh, for, as, as I said, First, my apologies for not being able to hear the opening remarks. I feel terrible about it. Uh, we have Kamlesh Shah, who is the president of ANME, whose job is to develop markets, ensure that the markets are more vibrant, are more dynamic. Could I first ask you to make your opening remarks on what do you think is possible for the market to make commodities that much more vibrant and that much more meaningful for investors and the economy. Kamlesh Bhai. You are on mute, Kamlesh Bhai. We are playing this game. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for asking me this question. Very relevant question, very interesting question. And I think, you know, that is there in everyone's mind. Everyone wants to do something in the commodity market, uh, provided there is right products available, there is right liquidity available. And uh, we are trying all our best to see that, you know, those in ingredients are provided. Commodity can be considered as an asset class. In fact, you know, these days, it is part of the portfolio of the uh, mutual funds also. So commodity going forward, will have a lot of potential. It has, uh, you know, a tremendous opportunity for one and all. It is not only for the market participants, but it is for the farmers who can have their product. It is for the manufacturers who can utilize the product, who can have the product, who can add the prices. It is the young generation to learn about the financial market, to understand the derivative, make use of it. Even government can use the uh, opportunity Trading in derivative market rather than physically sourcing the agri products from the farmers. Thereby, you know, they can save a lot of money, a lot of capex, a lot of logistic and infra cost plus the maintenance of the commodity. Do it at a fraction of the cost of what they are doing today, and that much more money would be available to see that the development happens in the agri-market and commodity market overall. So there is great number of opportunity available. I mean, India, uh, the derivative, derivative market is in a nascent stage. It requires, you know, a lot of uh, support. It requires volume, depth, and liquidity. The market has to mature before we bring in any restriction. So, you know, we should focus on the commodities where we can perform better, where we can provide, uh, I mean, due liquidity. Ultimately, you know, we can be a price setter for few of the commodities. Thank you. Wonderful. That was, that was a marvelous opening remark because it does set up.
it sets it set into perspective what is possible. Uh, could I now request uh, Amardev uh, Singh, who is an angel one, uh, to give his perspective on what is happening in the commodities market and what is possible? Yeah. Uh, a very good evening to everyone uh, for this session and thank you, sir, for this question. Uh, so I have been in the commodity markets, uh, uh, I would say, almost uh, since the beginning in India. So I've seen this market uh, uh, grow very, very closely. And uh, if you look at commodities, basically, as uh, uh, Kamlesh sir was also pointing out earlier, that uh, commodities, they also form a, a sort of asset class. So it's a part of diversification. But again, there are two sets of commodities. You've got the uh, agri uh, commodities and the non-agri commodities. So, uh, uh, so both have to be looked at from a very different perspective because both have different uh, factors which drive them, different rules and regulations which uh, drive them and also agri commodities being quite sensitive uh, to the inflationary concerns, uh, not only in India, but globally as well. So, uh, so that definitely is an area where uh, I would say uh, uh, there is a, a lot of uh, uh, maturity that still needs to uh, come because uh, uh, if you look at commodity markets now in India exchanges, I'm talking, we are close to 20 years, two decade uh, is now going to be there. So that's a long period of time, but still uh, I would say that uh, on the uh, uh, non-agri commodities, uh, we, because uh, they are very closely linked to the uh, international markets, most of them, uh, be it the bullion, crude oil, uh, energy basket or the base metals. So, and uh, uh, so, so that, that has a different play altogether. And that is of concern uh, to the regulators as well as to the uh, governments. Uh, but they are more concerned on the agri side because that's where the consumption happens on the, on the uh, mass, uh, mass level in terms of the uh, consumption pattern, be it the soya beans, be it the edible oils, be it uh, wheat, sugar, corn. Uh, so all these because that's basically consumed in bulk. So that has an impact on the average person. Uh, so, uh, so that's the area where... Uh, I say that uh, there is a lot to be uh, done in terms of uh, how we can grow this market. Because if you look at the uh, top commodity exchanges globally, uh, uh, we need to figure at least uh, both on the international as well, I would say on the agri and the non-agri. We definitely need to figure in the top uh, uh, five where we are not figuring in terms of the, uh, I would say the agri commodities. Because if you look at it, it's primarily China, which is everywhere. Uh, so, so that's one area which I see and also these commodities, even agri commodities, majority of them, I'll talk about the uh, major commodities like the soya bean or uh, it could be cotton, it could be wheat, it could be corn, it could be sugar. So these are all international commodities. Uh, but since, uh, as I said, that they are consumed uh, by everyone on earth, so the governments also do come into play as to how to uh, uh, look at the pricing because pricing definitely has a very impact very major impact on, on everyone's life. So, so that's the area because if you look at the, uh, uh, go back in history and see why the exchanges were established. So primarily for two purposes, one was efficient uh, price discovery because you got a different sort of market participants coming into play. And the second was uh, hedging, hedging risk because, uh, because the hedgers uh, be the likes of the, uh, uh, like I would say the companies which are there uh, on the consumption or the production space. Uh, so how they come and hedge their uh, risk on the platform. So from that perspective, the exchanges uh, uh, have come into being. Uh, but I would say that uh, just to sum it up right now, that uh, we have a long way to go on the uh, agri commodity side in terms of the uh, growing maturity and in terms of the volumes, because what we are seeing today is, I would say that's not even one hundredth of a percent, the potential that we have. Yes. So I would like to uh, stop here. Wonderful. I now would like to go to someone who's an authority in the markets, has been looking at commodity markets very, very closely, and that's Naveen Mathur, who heads the commodities division of Anand Rachi and Company. Now, when we look at commodity markets, we have only scratched the surface, and every time we think that we are going to be good in this area, something happens. How do you see going ahead? How do you make this market mature? How do you make this market vibrant? Um, thank you, Oscar, and I'm thankful. Naveen, your voice. Uh, is it coming, sir? 
it it's very 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 soft it started well but disappeared okay is it is it okay is it better now sir a little better okay i don't know what's the technology is playing some games <laughs> with both of us so uh, from your side on the audio and from my side on the audio too uh, is it better now sir now it's better now it's better i can hear you okay so so thank you for your opening remarks sir and introducing it was good suddenly disappeared for a second it came out and now your voice is gone is it okay now sir a little faint it came out very well for a second okay uh, i'll try to be uh, as loud as i can uh, okay so i'll take you from what you said uh, dr baskar uh, you said about price discovery empowering farmers yes uh, uh, in that particular regard i think we have not gone to that particular extent yes. of making an effective derivatives market on commodities yes sir uh, uh, what i'm trying to say is since the topic is uh, agri commodity markets growth your voice is good now <laughs> okay so i'll be now disappear <laughs> I think your jack uh, of microphone is loose, Naveen. It's absolutely perfect. Yeah. Okay, because it's uh, like. Just give me a minute. I'll take the microphone out. Just give me a minute. Is it okay? Better. It's better. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so Pascal sir, I'll I'll take the cues from you in terms of uh, the price discovery, uh, and since the topic is agri markets opportunities and growth. i will say two things with respect to the price discovery now we are largest producers and consumers for various agricultural commodities so as far as the question of price setter is concerned we anyway command certain positions for some commodities and particularly agri commodities in the space yes uh, i would say uh, means uh, the challenge for the agri commodities is particularly the price discovery and inefficiency in the physical markets now let me put it the other way in 2018 or 19 budget uh, our uh, the union budget it was very clearly laid out that the spot and the derivative markets needs to be integrated together Yes. Now, yes. if we are talking about agri markets, sir, I would say more so for these markets that our spot and the derivatives markets must be integrated to make the inefficiency turned up to the efficiency. Now, here we are. See, the irony is, particularly with respect to the agricultural markets, yes, that we have developed. the derivatives market first and our physical markets or the spot markets are still in tenter hooks of that opaqueness in terms of price discovery so the derivative markets have an underlying which is spot no doubt we track what's happening on the demand and supply situation all those things and that has an impact on the derivative market but any derivative market has an effective underlying and that underlying today is an opaque physical market so you uh, can't develop an efficient derivative market up till and unless you have achieved the efficiency to a large extent i'm not saying 100% efficiency but efficiency to a large extent on the spot and the physical markets sir so the intention whatever we are seeing are the results of that particular i would say non integration of the physical space as an underlying to a derivative market which is upon the underlying of what you trade in the physical markets so that's a very very strong mismatch and therefore i feel uh, whatever the government steps take it is just because of that simple reason that they they have not been able to improve in spite that we have celebrated our 75th independence day but we have not been able to take up the agricultural physical markets to the next level 
in spite we being the largest producers or consumers for agricultural markets. Very Dr. true. Vasco, so that's, that's the one thing which I feel personally, because of the experience, uh, as uh, Amar also said, we have worked together. So I'm there in the markets uh, from 2004 onwards, when actually these markets came up. And today we are here after 18 years, still struggling uh, for uh, the kind of apprehensions uh, to delisting or relisting of commodities on the exchanges. So I think one contour is definitely a price discovery contour and that price discovery contour is not well effectively uh, working for the agricultural commodities and therefore there are big question marks always whenever the price rises, whenever the prices are down. So the first point, what I would like to put it on the table is to ensure that uh, that we should, I would say, speak fast the process of what the government is thinking about the spot and the derivative market. It's, it's a big project, sir. It will not take months, days. It will take actually years for people to understand. So there are lot many initiatives done by the previous government and this government too, with respect to making electronic uh, ENAM and all those things which has happened, but nothing much of a successful story has happened. I think those are the critical points of integrating the spot and the derivatives, which will ensure the participation, liquidity and depth to the contracts which are traded in agri commodities uh, whatever the contract, so means FAR contracts or the current contracts. Uh, the second contour is the price risk management. So all international spaces, if you see, I would say anything you speak about, whether agri or non-agricultural commodities, the commercials, and by commercial, the definition is uh, the stakeholders, the physical participants, the corporates who use these commodities, the physical market players, uh, the institutional guys, like uh, I would say Anam and other things, Adani's in the world, uh, the uh, uh, LD's, uh, uh, Trafigura, all these people, if you see in international markets, they are the major people, it means these are the constituents or participants who consumes 70 to 80 percent of the total business what happens on the commodity space. Let me see how it means even on the seabot and other places where the agricultural commodities are in favor, 70 to 80 percent of the things are used for the price risk management. As Amar rightly said, uh, it's, it's, it's a need of an R. And if you say that the corporate needs to be there, you need to have the liquidity and the depth on the agricultural commodities and for that matter all the commodities for a longer horizon of contracts maybe four five months six months of the liquidity it's a chicken and egg situation dr basker uh, means uh, i'm seeing it for the last 20 years uh, it's a, it's a very clear chicken and egg situation uh, we yeah. say the the people the exchanges need to do and bring those uh, corporates onto the system or the commercials as by definition they are called uh, onto the system and uh, and uh, and the commercials say okay i'm willing to come out say for example i'm putting 2000 tons of uh, xyz commodity will i get the liquidity in the contract for next six months or three months uh, because of the, the the entire cycle, the corporate cycle, the production, the raw material, the buy, and then the final sell-out. So we don't have the liquidity on the forward contracts. Uh, uh, I think that's another challenge uh, which we must we we must. Yes. Your FP is allowed the the okay so the the fp is allowed you have the the farmer producer organizations uh, as an aggregator to farmers uh, they can participate on the exchanges you have the mutual funds uh, participating on the exchanges so all said and done it's there but to make it a little more vibrant you need to have the liquidity uh, on the farm month contract so i will raise uh, one point out of the two that spot and the derivative markets uh, uh, has to be integrated as fast as we can 
to make uh, the agri markets live to its fullest. So with that I'm answer, going to come back to you on that question. But before I come back to the question, I'd like to get the perspective of Pramod Dev on how he sees these markets developing in two areas. One is, of course, agri-commodities. And two, in the non-agri-commodities, you've just entered into steel products. How do you see that product doing? Kapil Dev, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, sir. And uh, thank you, uh, Naveen and uh, uh, Amar and Kamlesh ji to set the context. So uh, um, I think all the relevant points have been made by Naveen and Amar. Uh, yes, Indian market is a challenging market for all the reason, you know. We are operating when when people say commodity got suspended, commodities got banned, government intervention. It, it's a shock for us, especially a market which is only 15, 20 years old, you know, setting up uh, a long-term perspective, trying to build, move, uh, and, and, and going uh, to move ahead. And a lot of policy initiatives, regulatory initiative have been taken by SEBI, which actually uh, were with the view that they will help this market to grow in long term, uh, bringing all inclusive participations. But nevertheless, sir, when we know you are in agri, you know you are in a sensitive place in, in, in a country like India. And I think it shows how important these markets are, how important price discovery is, how important prices are. I think we have understood that part in last 50 years, that prices are very, very sensitive. Government knows from all the reason, from the political reason, for the, uh, the good reason, when we are talking about farmers or the consumer, and maybe um, rest of the reasons which they were talking in the agri reforms. So they have, we have understood now that how important these markets are and what we need to do it. I think the final alignment is left. So we have tried and tested almost everything. On if I talk about agri as a as a sector, I think the production side has been a very you know has been a success story in last in in last one decade. Almost every commodity except a few, we are now almost self-sufficient. Now, the marketing side is which, which, uh, which is struggling. And I think uh, we have to understand as a country that uh, a successful market uh, uh, define the success of an industry. It means if you don't have the right market, industry will not survive for long. And I think that's what we are struggling by right now. Yes. This, this is the transition which is happening from a short supply to a oversupply situation and some supply shocks we are seeing. There are two, three things. First of all, yes, like we have seen a lot of changes happening in the input side, right? We are talking about soil health card. We are talking about digitalization, farmers data, production data, digitalization of every platform government has. I think this output has to be seen, uh, the market output marketing has to be seen that way. We need to look towards the modern ways of agriculture input, agriculture produce marketing. And I think derivatives market play a huge role over there. Right? First of all, I will I will cover three, four points which covers everyone here in, in, in the system and including farmers if they are. First of all, agri, we, we are an agri economy. So the agri market and agri commodities Financial products derived from agriculture can be a you know, gateway to the rural market and rural customers. It's a huge base. And still, if you see our financial penetration is mostly limited to tier one and tier two, tier three, and uh, rural market is now we started picking up. But if we want really a fast growth, agriculture market be a huge opportunity for everyone who is into, uh, the, uh, in, into the services and uh, of financial products. Lacks of SMEs, MSMEs, you know, are operating in agri ecosystem. And the risk is distributed across uh, the top to bottom in, in, in this, in this uh, because of the size. If by giving the right product, creating right awareness, we can protect them, you know, and the, the largest risk they do carry is the price risk. If whatever government does, it brings risk and larger risk to one segment. If they ban export, it impacts farmers. If they ban import, it impacts consumer and many industries who are working around it, this ecosystem. But if these products are, you know, 
given a chance the right awareness is created the right use of these product is there i think it brings a lot of business opportunity to all the business partners we have like navin ji and, and amar ji that the lacks of processors are there who are operating in the agri ecosystem and as of now only few are using derivatives market rest of them may be looking at this market but not actually participating so it brings lot of huge opportunity by doing it i think we can bring lot of financial stability to the ecosystem because we are an agri economy what happens in agri impacts whatever have in in many of many other sectors whether it's banking whether it's fmcg whether it's automobile one bad news of monsoon can impact the entire you know financial indicators of the country but if we can bring some kind of resilience using derivatives market having proper risk management that will help a lot now we come to the government which is very very important i think importance of market they understand the only thing is that how to use them for the reason they are working on their their policies are working on whether it's price support price stabilization farmer support and consumer protection i think derivatives market offers solution of each and everything as kamlesh ji said earlier we have done put options where farmers can come and hedge they can lock their prices they need not to dependent on uh, on the government or maybe anyone else to decide what price they want for their crop farmer issue is resolved all the industry can come and hedge at the right price and they can offer that right price to the consumer as well this is also resolved government also come and you know use derivatives market for various reason they intervene in the market we have seen now rbi coming into the forward market currency market and intervening when they need to have uh, you know uh, the control or maybe the intervening the the, the 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 dollar rupees i think they being the largest holder of the commodities now right wheat they had 60 million ton paddy they have 60 million ton uh, chana they have right now around 2.5 and 3 million ton i think the so they have better control on the physical side now now i think the efficiency need to become how to intervene in the market at the right time which is which brings efficiency not the disruption and i think yes. derivatives market i think derivatives market can play a huge role and uh, hopefully a uh, good sense will prevail with the help of all the discussions we are um, doing we are bringing all uh, you know people who understand this market to the government lot of uh, i think dialogues are going on and uh, um, i'm just keeping my finger crossed that next time when we meet we, we have all the products back and we 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 talking about that but almost 5 to 6 million contracts are trading on the daily basis in cme right uh, no in in china almost 2 million ton of contracts per day are traded in the in, in the seaboard market and their size if you see i'm talking about contract their size is 125 million ton one contract it's huge and it's it's humongous we have seen the growth in equities we have seen growth in options and index i think commodities are the next who have who have equally uh, you know uh capability to provide opportunity to everyone whether it's investor traders farmers and more important all people we are in the call the intermediate easy who provide financial services uh, to 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 everyone thank you thank you uh this brings me to one question which is open to everybody and it takes off on uh, navin's argument or not argument let's let's put it statement that uh, this will take a long time to bring about a synchronization of spot and derivative markets will take a long time is it because of political will is it because of uh, the inability of market players to understand how this game is played or is it because a uh, vested interest love queering the pitch the question is open to everybody as so who is the first one to take the bait with the opening remarks so who's the first one says since uh, i said it sir okay uh, i will start uh, <laughs> i think it's a mix of all sir uh, i see uh, it is not one over the other it is an entity all the three of it what you said okay sir. uh as far as uh, means uh, the uh, i would say the interest 
of the value chain participants are concerned? Definitely, yes. We saw last year the farmers' agitation and all. So oh, yes. Be it, be it for the good or the bad, people don't understand and realize uh, what policies can be fruitful uh, for them over a long term. And there's a second agitation likely very soon. That's right, sir. So, so misguided, uh, I would say, uh, because of... Uh, numerous reasons and this is not the forum sir to talk about that i agree i i think uh, it's more to do with that including the vested interest so okay so that means uh, uh, there's not much which is happening in the spot markets on the agricultural so non agricultural commodities we don't see that kind of uh, vibrations uh, but then on the agricultural side it is all the more uh, important I think the government has been doing a bit. We are seeing reforms on the agri side too. So if you see the agricultural growth, which used to be suboptimal, uh, sometimes it leads the pack to 4-5% on quarter on quarter sometimes and even year on year. So, so I think, I think uh, A, the technology uh, which we are talking about, uh, digital India, which is largely reflected on e-commerce or the manufacturing side of things, we have not embraced the technology uh, for higher productivity. We are a mix of technology and still all those primitive processes for last 75 years, so it's a mix of that. So up to now, less, the technology will not play its critical role on uh, on on I would say uh, the, 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 the agri uh, production and other things, you will see this gap, but then this gap can be minimized. If it is 100 to A to Z, it can be minimized by taking certain proactive actions. And this government particularly, since it is focused always on the digital side, so I think the transmission of that automation process on the agricultural commodity side would not be a difficult stuff. The only difficulty is that people in the rural India, although they are aspiring to be an urban uh, urban uh, class people, uh, lot much has changed post COVID. Lot much has changed post the digital or the internet revolution coming in, so the people know about it. Uh, okay, so I don't know. <laughs> but go ahead, go ahead. We can hear you. Okay, okay. So I think, I think, uh, I think uh, it's it's a mix of all. But yes, the kind of the government we have, if it is a right thing, in spite that we have the agitations, uh, and then. Uh, revisiting the ordinances or the reforms, but the government is on the right track of ensuring that, yes, both the sides, the manufacturing size and uh, the agri side uh, come up to the expectation of what India should be at 100 on 2047. So what I'm trying to say, it's a mix of all, lot many things to do. If the intentions are right, then you have everything in place for making a very effective uh, spot market and basis the effective spot market. Why not an efficient derivative markets? Kamlesh, why what's your view? You're on mute. Right, you know, I mean, I have some different perspective. You know, we have heard a lot about uh, spot market and derivative market, the things to be done uh, to correct uh, the balances and, uh, you know, to correct both the markets and things like that. You know, uh, the derivative market uh, for commodities is around 15 years old, whereas equity market is around 22 years old. So there is not much of a difference. You know, I mean, both are in the range of 15, 20 years. See the way derivative market equity has developed, mainly because of options and other things. Today, you know, we are, NFT is one of the largest exchange in the world. And you see the volume. Now, you know, the time has come where we realize the product potential. The derivative market has different potential. It has, it is to be taken as a tool which could be utilized by many. You know, if the derivative market is developed, then government will not have to put all the restrictions on the uh, 
uh, on the uh, agri market also because you will get lot of indication from the derivative market yeah, the market. open interest from the uh, you know price movement from the uh, built up from the expectation of the uh, farmers and you know there are many many parameters which could be studied because spot market is times of the day whereas future market will tell you what will happen in 3 months or 6 months so and when you have better tools available why not to use it according to me options could be the way forward if the option market is developed properly that can you know solve the purpose of everyone including government as i mentioned earlier also government can adopt they have done it uh, they have done pilot project they have been very successful it is now time to see that those techniques are used or those tools are used for purpose to build the economy to build the uh, i mean to protect the interest of all the uh, all the uh, people and uh, uh, if option market is developed properly then uh, you know it can lead uh, to things in a, in a, in a better uh, fashion now the development of market we need some kind of transparency we need some kind of discipline there has been you know many cases uh, especially in commodity market whereby it has disturbed the market and that was the primary reason for putting so many restrictions so we have to study that the other thing is the education i mean uh, we will have to educate each and every farmers each and every uh, rural person about the potential of you know coming on the exchange platform or you know uh, how they can uh, take the maximum advantage of whatever platforms are available now that has also to be in multiple language you know if you explain everything in english people will not understand Very so you will have to go to each villages talk in 20 30, 20 22 different languages you have to have literature in those languages and explain in proper way how they can benefit the intention is to protect interest of all the stakeholders when all the stakeholders are happy the market will draw the volume because participation of all the people is equally important for orderly development of the market the data is a new science you know the data will tell you many things now the data is available the technology is available earlier the technology was not available in the covid period you know we could uh, show interest of our clients seamlessly be it work from home or be it work from office so the technology is there digitization is there and we have to see that things are changing even the way of doing business is changing so we have to change accordingly with that you know my appeal is to take everyone on the board to understand the real issues go to the villages educate them have a program for education and ultimately you know everyone should come on board and uh, uh, i mean in short you know i would like to say that the options and the derivative market is the price uh, you know setters rather than you know price takers earlier we used to derive from the spot market for the derivative market these days the volume in derivative market is so very large which can determine the price in the spot also thank you thank you yeah. very much can i have, can i have your views uh, amar dev singh yeah uh, uh, see uh, what uh, what i would like to say here is that there's a very nice uh, saying that uh, there was light and the world was created so uh, what uh, what i mean to say here is that if the people who are actually the ones who are the decision makers of the commodity markets i'm talking about the political establishment i'm talking about the other uh, different departments if they were to go and actually see how the dalian commodity exchange or how the chicago uh, uh, board of futures they they trade uh, what exactly is hap- happening and how the these two economies world two economies how they are managing the uh, agri commodities and and uh, and how uh, they are able to take advantage because these are uh, live examples and these examples have been there for uh, decades now so there's nothing that we are going to reinvent something it's already there the question is that are we really willing to take advantage of this and for that as uh, kamlesh uh, ji also pointed out that 
education and to the to the last mile so the person who's there on the ground the farmer if if they are uh, made aware of this and also about the fpos how uh, these participants can take advantage of this and also we'll have to be means i mean i am saying here uh, from a uh, overall perspective that we all have to be uh, willing to live with volatility so prices will increase so uh, hiding behind something will not help so we have to face it and how to manage it that is the key and derivatives uh, offers an excellent uh, opportunity to manage the price risk provided one is aware about it how to uh, take advantage of it so so i would like to uh, 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 say this kapil dev would you like to give your comments before i invite everyone to give closing remarks because we have reached the end of our session uh no i think sir uh, this is this is correct this first of all a transformation the sport market is needed but do we now need to uh that follow the traditional approach may maybe not because now we have enwr in place government is already talking about uh, creating online sport market out of mandi trades various e market for agriculture now operating which were maybe uh, two five years back now maybe we have uh, 20 who are operating and everybody is doing quite a significant trade in online market which is sport trade so we have our own subsidiary there are various new startups who has come up so sport market is transforming maybe it is skipping the traditional way of development it's reaching from a the, the very traditional to directly uh, on online platform but it is happening uh, once that comes i think a uh, lot of transparency will be there in terms of who is buying who is selling who is holding uh, who is uh, doing transaction in commodities so the question uh, on the prices will be low uh, we are expecting that a uh, second uh, number of sport markets and more use of enwr will give opportunity for people to go and buy physical goods uh, with a lot of ease and trading on derivatives market which usually happens across the globe and point number 3 of course the acceptance of these tool as a solution to various problems has to be there among the political establishment and now uh, we have seen uh, dalian was mentioned uh, seaboard i discussed even now nigeria ghana and nepal is on the uh, way to launch their own commodity exchange maybe in next uh, one year you will see all three into existence exactly so so, so these are the these are the concept which are now well defined only one commodities which has been suspended in the global market from a from a running market was the onion and and the us has a onion features act actually otherwise they have kept this market free you launch a product just inform us and make it successful we will tell you what not to launch so i think we have to we have to see from that way okay uh, be free be flexible launch the product these are the product which you cannot launch to avoid the uh, the kind of things are happening but still i think the questioning the market questioning the prices will not be a solution whether we are uh, in derivatives or not uh, we have to create acceptance on the prices uh, for the right reason having the right knowledge to everyone in the ecosystem what's happening in the wheat is the is the best example um the kind of stock we had a uh, kind of presence we made in the international market now we are talking about maybe importing wheat uh, in in few months and i i don't think it's a problem the only problem is availability of information if we all know right as a financial trader as a farmer as a consumer as a trader as a government that what is exactly happening what is stock we have what consumption we are doing what carry we are having what is ending stock who is holding what prices will not be questioned so yes. i think that information system also very important and derivative naturally bring that information system it 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 is does a need to be built we have we know how much stock in derivatives market is which warehouses which location which quality who has that stock who is transferring that stock who is taking that stock who has deposited the stock so i think those informations are a naturally part of derivative ecosystem once we start using it and uh, uh, start respecting the market and prices a lot of things will get sorted and uh, we will have long term stability uh, in derivatives market great now since we already reached the end of our session i would request the organizers to give me about 10 minutes more 
so I can have two minutes of closing remarks from each person. Please stick to the two minutes because then I don't have to spill over into excessive timing. Uh, the question that the, the two minutes closing could be on any topic that you think is relevant, but since we have spoken about the need to synergize markets and spots and derivatives, bringing in technology, my only submission is that technology has no meaning if you're going to ban a trade, if you're going to close a market. We've learned from experience never to close the equity market. Why can't we do the same with commodity markets? And there's one more issue. As Kapil rightly said, we need information. That information must be available on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, not on an ad hoc basis. These are areas that are of concern. Two, two minutes to everybody. Uh, can we start with uh, uh, Kamlishi? Again, you're on mute. <laughs> Kamlishi, sir, mute. Then. I can't yeah. hear you. Yeah. Uh, uh, see, uh, to sum up the uh, story, uh, I believe that commodity should be taken as an asset class. That's not commodity, it's an asset. And, uh, you know, uh, if someone, is, someone has studied, they could have made a lot of money out of commodity, uh, even better than the equity market. World over, commodity market is bigger than the equity market. Very so true. there's no reason commodity market cannot be developed. There has to be mutual fund focused on mutual fund. Whatever issues are there with them should be, uh, uh, I mean, addressed. And SIP kind of system should be uh, cultivated. Second thing, I've already spoken about the education and, uh, you know, I mean, it is a reputation, but still I feel that uh, it should reach to each and every person in the country, even the remote place or the uh, uneducated person should also learn because it is not difficult. Even today, my driver uses phone for practically all the purpose. So, you know, once he learns, he will be able to adopt that technology very easily. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, with the kind of uh, data available, the kind of communication system we have, the kind of technology we have, we can always focus on the technology. The technology would be the best best uh, way to grow and to go forward. There is a lot of scope in the, uh, in the uh, commodity market. The other point I wanted to touch was from the product portfolio. You can have bring more products which may not be, you know, uh, susceptible to the restrictions imposed by the government. So we'll have to expand our product portfolio. And uh, lastly, you know, we have to en get engaged with the regulator on a regular basis to see that, you know, whatever their concerns are taken care of. And we have continuous communication with them. And they are, I mean, regulator has a two role to play. One is to regulate and one to develop the market. So the development part has to be focused uh, rather than the regulatory part. Regulatory part, we have come long way. So now that development also, so engagement with the uh, regulator is also important. Thereby, we will be able to expand the scope of the market. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Naveenji, two minutes. Uh, okay, sir, I won't take two minutes, one minute only for two of the points. <laughs> so I leave it to uh, Kapil and all, sir. Uh, I think there are two things, sir. One is definitely what uh, Kamlesa said, the modernization of our agri markets. I'm restricting myself on the agri because the topic is agri markets. So the modernization of the agricultural markets. And I still believe and still believe and continue to believe that up till and unless your spot markets are educated, uh, well-educated, I should say. The farmers are well-educated. Uh, they should not, they should not, maybe through FPOs, they can come onto the markets, aggregators they can use to come onto the markets, but they should not come onto the market straight on their own. So education, modernization, and the last is spot and the future integration. I still believe that's the, the, the first most effective thing for any derivative market to have an underlying on which the derivative stood to be effective and efficient. So three things sir, from my side, one minute I did. Sir. Brilliant, thank you very much. Okay, can we Thank have... you sir, thanks a lot sir. Thank you very much. Um, Amar, Amar Singh. 
Yeah. Uh, so I would like to uh, submit here that uh, the focus uh, should be on uh, broader and internationally linked commodities because uh, that's where uh, uh, the the conviction also will be higher uh, yes. in terms of all market participants because if others have made it to be a success, then why can't we? And mm -hmm. why can't this market grow 200-fold over the next 10 years or so? So that should be one because too many commodities and too much focus on everyone wouldn't be possible. So a broader commodities and international commodities, that's one. And second is the options part. Because uh, options also is something which uh, definitely has a, a very uh, important, uh, uh, I would say, as an instrument uh, for different types of participants. So that's the uh, second aspect which uh, definitely needs to be uh, done on the education part. So I would like to uh, submit these two. Naveen, you had a point. Just the one point, the exchange is doing wonderfully well with respect to diversifying its risk from the agricultural commodities to the non-agricultural commodities. Yes. So I think the NCDX uh, with steel has uh, started working on in a good way. Uh, it's it's a slow start, fact, but ask, it is picking up the steel. GM tell me I was going to ask Kapil that same question on steel. <laughs> so then, then I I moderated it for you, sir. I'm Thank you very it. much. It's wonderful. <laughs> I'm glad you reminded me. Uh, Kapil ji, besides that, in the closing remarks, could you also address what you're doing to promote the steel market? Uh, yes. So, so first thing, yes, agri still remain. We are at an agri and we have to make agriculture yes. market correct. So we'll keep on focusing, keep on, you know, creating right set of awareness among uh, everyone who is important for this ecosystem. And with the help of market participants, stakeholder association, and me, we are doing that, and we'll keep on doing that. Uh, on about the diversification, yes, we are looking into it because ultimately, business of business is business, and we have to look uh, how yeah. to survive, even if you want to make any change. So, so we are focusing on certain commodities which we think are of uh, which are very very important. And India need to have derivatives in that. So steel is one of them. It's the largest metals we have. And if we do compare with other benchmark metals contract we have, the potential is maybe 100 times more because of the size of the steel. So we had a steel futures earlier. We have just launched, relaunched it uh, with some changes uh, which was mandated by the government, BIS, uh, actually. So we have just launched it now, started getting traction. Uh, we are taking this contact to all the people uh, and, and, and it's the right time because the kind of volatility still has seen in last one year has impacted everyone, consumer and uh, the plant, manufacturers, automobile, everyone. So we are taking them slowly and gradually to each and everyone. And every day we are seeing now a bit of open interest uh, building up. It's it just now started and we are quite hopeful that uh, it still will do. Uh, it will help us to diversify first and of course giving a a contract uh, one more contract where india drive its own prices like we have in spices and agri and maybe the world will also follow uh, indian steel prices excellent uh, with that uh, and without getting on the nerves of the administrators i thank each one of the participants for throwing light on this interesting vital critical part of the Indian economy. With agriculture being the backbone of India, it's surprising that we've not been able to do it. I know that this has been done beautifully in one agricultural commodity, and that is milk. When a man could single-handedly do it as milk without even a market being in place, there's a lot more that is achievable in agricultural commodities, especially because of its criticality to India's, uh, to India's economic strengths. Your views were brilliant, incisive, and educative. I've learned a bit, and I hope to learn a lot. And some of you I'll try to contact later to see if I can pick your brains for some more information. Thank you very much for being with us and for being on this platform. Thank you, NCDX, for organizing this. Thank you, all the sponsors, for making this possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very work. much. Sir. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And Thanks, I apologize Kapil. for the technical problems I had in the beginning. So you won't have to. <laughs> <laughs>